Hi, Sarah Banis here. Simply Sarah Made Easy. Today we are going to make a wine tumbler, a sublimation wine tumbler. So wine tumblers are a little bit different than regular tumblers because with regular tumblers, what you're dealing with is um, just a straight tumbler. You can see on this, there's a curve at the bottom. So we have to address that and um, and how we do our full wrap if we're going to cover that, which is what we're gonna to do today. So I'm gonna take you step by step all the way from the actual building of the design that will fit correctly on there um, through sizing it, printing it, wrapping it, and then uh, pressing it. We're actually not gonna press it. We're going to uh, bake this today in um, a PYD Life uh, sublimation oven. So they were kind enough to send to me to show you guys how fantastic it is. This is actually my fifth PYD Life machine, love them. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to measure our cup so that we're sure that we have the exact right dimensions. So the way that I generally measure is I take a piece of string. I mean, there's any number of ways, but this is, this is the way that I have found to be accurate, okay? And then I run it right along the top. Let's see that I get it as close to the top as I can so I can get a uh, perfect dimension. Oops. And hold that down like that. And then pull it tight. You wanna make sure that you're not pulling it too tight um, because then when it releases, you, it'll the count will be off just a little bit. So that is just about perfect right there, okay? So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna snip that off of there. Okay, and this is, I can measure right on that. And again, like I said, there's, I mean, any number of ways that you can measure. If you wanna use a, um, just a regular, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a soft measuring tape that you would use for uh, sewing or anything like that, you can do that also. This is what I found works. Okay, so we are right exactly at 10.5. So that's exact, so that's nice. And you're always gonna wanna measure for each individual cup you have, because not all cups are gonna be the same. So and to get so to get a precise measurement, you want to measure each one. Okay, these are also PYD Life cups. Take this little sticker off of here, and it comes with a nice little thing for the bottom for when we're done popping on there after we press. Okay, so let me write down ten point five so I do not forget. And then the next measurement we need is we need from top to bottom. Okay, so, oops, that's not the piece I want. So, this is the top. And then to get exactly to the bottom, that is where we are at. I'm gonna try to keep that as straight as you can. So, just about like that. If this video is of interest to you uh, or helpful, like the video, that helps me out a lot, but also subscribe to my channel. You'll get notification when the new videos come out, probably once or twice a week. Um, lots of ways learning how to design for yourself um, and how to use your machines, whether it's Cricut, Silhouette, Sublimation. Okay, so that's perfect. So we're exactly at four and a half on that. Okay, so 4.5 high. One other thing real quick, I'm gonna link in the video description. I'll link everything that I use here. I'll link the PYD Life oven, the tumblers. I'm going to link uh, the design that we're going to use. I'll link the paper that I use. 
Uh, if you're not familiar with sublimation and you don't know how to convert a printer or you're not sure what printer to get, I'll link a video on that so that you can learn uh, converting an Epson is incredibly easy and sublimation is a lot of fun. So I'll link a video on how to do that. But I'm also going to link our Facebook group, Sublimation for Beginners. It's not all beginners. It's about 150,000 members at this point. Super friendly, super helpful. Join us there. You'll fit right in. You'll love the group. So let's go ahead. Let's move over to my laptop. Let's get our design made. We'll get it printed. We'll get it set on here and we'll get it pressed. Okay, before we go over to um, the computer, I actually, there's one more thing that we need to measure, okay? So we need to measure where this curve begins, where that curve begins to the bottom, okay? Because that is gonna be where we cut our design so that we can handle that curve. You wanna start right at the very, like right at the top of the curve, okay? So it's gonna be right around right there. And that's how long that's gonna be. And then we'll take and measure that. So that goes right to, we're at one and a quarter. So we're just over one and a half. Yeah, we're just over one and a half. So now let's go ahead, let's go over to the computer and we will work on the design. Okay, so here we are. We are at my laptop. Um, so I am in Silhouette Studio, but you can do this in any program that works with layers. So whether that's Cricut Design Space or any of the Adobe products or um, Affinity or whatever program you're using. So Inkscape. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a template for our wine tumbler. Okay. So we are going to make a rectangle and then we know that we want this. So I need to up here on the top, I need to click unlock. Okay. And then I know that I want it 10.5 wide by 4.5 high. Okay. So that is going to be our template. I'm going to change that to gray just so it's a little easier to work with. Okay. And now what I want to do here is I am going to take this. This is super pretty. Um, I really like this designer's work. I'll link it in the video description. I'll link this. I'll link this font we're going to use. Super, super pretty. Um, and then we are going to be using these brush strokes. Um, and I will link these in the video description. Also super pretty. So this, this is an actual tumbler wrap. So um, you can't see it right now, but you'll see when we wrap it that this side, the right side matches the left side. So it's seamless. So when we put that on, you won't be able to see where that seam is on there. Um, so we don't want to disturb that. So what we want to do is we want to take it and we want to, with it selected, I'm going to go up here, make sure your lock is on. So your dimensions stay in proportion. And then I'm going to make this 10.5. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine, I'm going to send this to the back for now. And I'm going to determine where on here, what portion of this design I would like uh, to be on my cup. So I think... Let's see here. And you want to keep in mind also that we will be, um, a portion of this design will be covered. The bottom portion will be covered with, um, with our brush strokes. So you want to keep that in mind when choosing which, which part you want to keep also. So I think that I think that right about I 
think right about right there is good. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to oops, make two rectangles. And I'm going to take the first one, I'm going to put it right here. And you want to make sure that it fully covers the part that you want to crop away. Okay, and then I'm going to select those two. And then I'm going to go over here and oops, I'm going to go to my modify panel, which is right here on Silhouette Studio. And I'm going to click subtract. And I'm going to do that same thing again, only this time on the top portion. And I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but what I, here, let me move it down so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm using this back, this gray, which was our initial template. And I'm using that as a guide. So I, I know that this is the portion that I want to crop out. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be left with 10 by 4.5 just in our design. So I'm selecting those two. I'm selecting this rectangle and the sunflower design. I'm going to click subtract. And now I can get rid of this template. And this should be left at 10.5 by 4. It's a little over 4. But that's so that's correct there. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to this right here. Now what we want to do, we know that that bottom portion was 1.62 high where the curve started. So let's make another rectangle and we can unlock it. And we want the height to be 1.62. Okay. And I'm going to change the color of that again so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this right here so that I know that is where I want, that is where I want my brush strokes to start is right about right there. Okay. So let's move up all of our brush strokes. And um, if you're unfamiliar with how to use brush strokes, uh, I'll link in the video description, I'll link uh, um, a video on how to use brush strokes. They're very easy and uh, very useful. So I'm going to make these a little bit bigger. I'm going to make these about that size. Now the purpose of putting these brush strokes at the bottom is that what we're going to do is we're going to cut this, right? So we're going to take little snips here at the bottom, and then we're going to um, kind of fit that to the bottom of the cut. If we did that with just this how it is, what would happen is it would end up with, um, it would end up where you could see the folds. When you're doing it in glitter or in brush stroke, something like that, it kind of all blends together so you can't see those the cuts the same way. You'll see when we get to that point, but that, that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to bring this to the front. I am going to, it's just kind of a template for where we're going to be at. Um, actually, I want to move that over so that I can see the edge here. So that's kind of where we want it to that's where we want it to be at and you can kind of just fit these together how you want them this this brush stroke set is absolutely fantastic I love this one I'll link that in the video description also so Sometimes, sometimes you'll see like, see how that's on top of those. I'm not sure that I love that like that. So sometimes you'll have to like click on other layers and move them to the front. All you do to switch your layers around is in Celeste Studio at least is right click and then you can send it back, send a front, bring forward, 
uh, bring back, send backwards. So send to back or send to front, that sends it all the way to the back layer or all the way to the front layer where um, bring forward or send backwards sends it one layer back or one layer forward. So I'll move this one over. Lots and lots and lots of pretty options in here. So see how that, so this is, see how it's behind those? I actually want this to be in the front. So I'm going to um, bring to front and see now how it's on top. And you can also, so say I wanted to use the bottom side of that, I can flip it horizontally, oops, not horizontally, flip vertically. You can flip it vertically if, say, you wanted that darker side on top. Wow. And this is all kind of just, um, you just kind of play with it until you have it how you want it. And then once we get to the bottom here, you can see this set actually comes with some like pretty overlays that we can use on top. And then that kind of just ties it all together. And so I don't have to necessarily use all of these. Like if I wanted to, I could like duplicate some of these out and, and reuse them. But it just so happens that all of them actually kind of fit perfectly on there. So we can do that like that. Like that. And if these overlap on the ends, it's a little bit, that's okay. Um, what will end up happening is it will, um, we're going to, well, after we print, we'll cut that. So that's fine. So now with these, so there's a whole bunch of these, and there's four of them in this set. So you're going to want to send that to the front. And then you just kind of lay that over your, and it just kind of ties it all together. And again, if you want to, you can duplicate those out. Put that one on. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all of these, just the brush strokes and the overlays, and I'm going to group them together. Okay, and now I'm going to make myself another rectangle. Okay, and what I want to do is this. I want to select these and then move these over to the side so that I can see where the bottom of um, the base design, so this, the sunflowers, so that I can line that up so that I can snip off, slice off the bottom portion of those um, overlays. See how I did that? And now, okay, so it actually, okay. So that actually separated those out, which is fine. So we're just going to take that, just get rid of that, and then we'll re-select all of these and then regroup them. And then we'll take this and we'll put that on the bottom, select both of those, and then this is your alignment tool on Silhouette Studio right here. 
we're going to center align and we're going to bottom align. And now let's check our sizing on this. Let's make sure that we are at Okay, so right now we are at, I'm not sure why, but we're at 10.862. Wait just one second. Let's move this over. Okay, so let's group this all together. Okay, and we are at. 10.862 wide and that's actually wider than we need to be. We need to be at 10.5 but we don't want to reduce that height at all. So what we need to do is we need to let's see let's see what happens if we it might not be too terrible if we stretch it. Let's just see. Mm, that's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stick with that. So we are now at 10.5 um, by 4.5. And then I'm going to take this name and I'm going to bring that to the front. So I'm going to bring that to the front. And then I'm going to put the name... Let's see, I think I'm going to put that right about, I think I'm going to put that right here, I think that's pretty, you don't want to bring it down um, too far because you don't want to put it like right on top of um, where your, you don't want to put it right on top of where you're going to be cutting. So right there is good though. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select all of these and I am going to group them all together and I'm going to get rid of this. And now, so what we need to do now is we need to mirror the design. So you have a couple of different options for mirroring. mirroring. Um, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to flip horizontally and that's going to mirror the design. You can also mirror right in your um, print software. So when you go to print, you can mirror it there, but this is fine. So now, now let me go ahead. I'm going to turn the printer on. I'm going to get this printed and then we'll go over to the craft table and I'll show you how to um, put it onto the um, wine tumbler. And then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, put it in the sublimation oven and we will get this finished. Okay, so we have our uh, wrap printed. And the next thing we need to do is we need to wipe down our tumbler blank. Okay, so generally I would take an alcohol wipe and wipe it down. I can't find them. Um, I can't find the ones that I have. So... Let's take the top off. This is such a nice glass. Look at that. Look at the quality on that. These are, again, these are PYD Life also. Really, really, really like this brand a lot. Um, so I'm going to wipe it down because I can't find my alcohol wipes. I'm going to wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. The point of this is to get any oils from your hands or any um, little bits of fibers or anything like that off of your blank. Alright, so put that off to the side. Now what we need to do is we need to cut this down. And we're going to try to get it as close to perfect as we can because this, um, this is exactly to size for our blank. So you're going to load that up square and then just like that. Perfect. Perfect cut. Okay. So we can get rid of that. I really, really like this Cricut cutter too. 
I have a lot of paper cutters and this one is my favorite. I'll link everything that I use in the video description. Okay. Oops. Perfect, 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 okay. Okay, perfect cut. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to take and we're going to cut this fringe part at the bottom that will go on the bottom of the cut that'll wrap around that bottom curve part on the bottom. We're going to cut that about every that far apart. Try to be careful that you're not these little gems that you don't cut through those if you can. And this is about the size of the pieces you want to make. You want to cut it right up to the top. I mean, if you can avoid them, avoid them. Those little gems, if you can't, you can't. Okay, so now what we're going to do is trying to not touch the um, the actual cut because you want to not get your fingerprints back on there again. We're going to wrap this, but what? let's talk a little bit about tape. So generally speaking, I do not like yellow tape. Yellow tape can leave stains on your projects, so you want to be careful anytime you are using it that you're Try not to touch the, the actual substrate itself. Um, not all yellow tape leaf stains, but enough does that um, you want to be careful of that. So generally speaking, I use blue tape. Um, but with this project, because you need it to be able to stretch a little bit more and the blue doesn't have as much stretch to it, you do need to use the yellow tape for the at least for the bottom part. So and if you don't have a tape dispenser, get one. It makes such a huge difference. I waited way too long to get one. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get this wrapped. So the first part of wrapping, the first part of wrapping is you want to get this so that the top lines up straight across, as close to being straight across the top as it can get. And then you want to stretch this as tight as you can possibly get it because this is this is an absolute perfect um, perfect cut. So um, 
if you can get it tight, you won't end up with any seam at all. So try to get that as tight as you can. And again, going all the way down, getting it as tight as you possibly can. And try to make sure that it's laying flush as you go down. Okay, so now the next thing, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm kinda like pushing down on that seam just to be sure. I mean, it's, it, is, it is perfect on there, but you wanna be sure that you're not ending up with um, any uh, like little lumps in there. So just kinda use your nail to kinda Flatten it down just to be sure you get it perfect. Okay, so and then the next thing I did, I don't know if you saw that, but I'm checking to make sure that this is all the way up against the top of the cup because the last thing you want is a white line at the top of your cup. You want your color to go all the way up to the very, very, very top. So I'm just making sure that this is to the top, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna take a longer piece of the yellow. Is that gonna be long? I don't think that's quite long enough. You wanna make sure you have one that will go all the way around once, okay? And at the very top of your fringe, okay? So right about right there, You're gonna start this, okay? And then you're gonna run this all the way, as tight as you can get it, all the way around, <clears throat> excuse me, just the very, very top of that fringe. Again, keeping it as tight as you can get it. This one, I can run that, well, I have it here anyways. I can run that right along that top seam. Seam here. Again, holding it down with my nails. And then before I put the next line of this on, I'm gonna just smooth this down so that I'm sure I have it all the way nice and flat and flush okay and then you're just going to make sure that these are overlapping um going kind of the same way <clears throat> excuse me kind of the same way around so that they're not you aren't getting weird overlaps make sure that it'll lay flush as you go Okay, so now the next step, another large piece of tape. Okay, and then starting around the same spot as your last one. And then kind of just as you go, press it down. And it'll kind of just fall where it belongs. 
and then kind of just as you're moving around you want to kind of smooth it down some and you don't want to go any like you don't want to go super fast with this like you want to make sure that you are um getting them down nice and taut Again, smoothing as you go. Keep that nice and flat. And again, just, you know, going through and just kind of um, checking these and making sure that they're laying flat. And these extra, you know, these extra steps, it really makes a difference in the end. So just keep going around. Okay, next piece. Getting there. So you can you can see why it's so important that the tape has stretch to it. And the, the deeper down you get onto the curve here, um, the more you got to kind of stretch the tape out and kind of force it to work with you going around. And then you want to make sure that you're uh, pushing that down as you go. Two more.
So now with this part, I'm going to try to be a little bit careful that I don't get the yellow tape um, on the base of my cup. Because like I said, sometimes yellow tape can stain. So, and that's the last thing that we want. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go in with a little bit of blue tape and I'm just going to finish up these edges with blue tape um, so I don't have to worry about staining. Yeah, I'm just barely, barely coming over the edge there with my design. And I'm I'm pushing before I put the push on this top part, I'm pushing on the part closest to the design so that I'm not ending up with wrinkles. I'm trying to smooth that out as I go so that I'm ending up with a perfect seam going all the way around. <clears throat> okay, last piece on the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so there's that. And now let's do the top. Same thing, I'm going to use the blue on the top. The blue tape that I use is um, also PYD Life. The, um, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the, uh, so we're gonna run this right along the top edge. The um, tumble, the uh, convection oven that we're gonna use today, they were kind enough to send to me to show you guys. It's super, super, super nice. Um, I have several, several of their um, presses and presses and ovens, I have several. Sorry, trying to do two things at once. Okay, so now this is this. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip this in. I'm just making sure I get a good solid top so that I don't end up with a weird edge at the top, a bad edge. Going all the way around. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm very carefully folding over the edge. So I'm pushing up and I'm folding in, pushing up and folding in so that I'm getting a perfect, nice flat edge on the top. Okay. All right. And then you're gonna go through and just tighten that up.
any little like bubbles or anything that you have, you do want to make sure that you uh, get those tightened up. So like there's a tiny, tiny little bubble there. So what I'm going to do is actually two tiny bubbles there. I am going to... So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to tighten that up. So that it's pressing nice and taut. And I can use the yellow tape now because I have the blue tape to protect it there. So I'm just tightening that up. So nice and tight against the edge. And I, again, I know that it seems like we're taking a lot of extra steps, but it's worth it in the end. You'll, you'll see the difference in the quality of your product if you take these extra steps now. Okay. So it's nice and tight. If you want to, you can go through and wrap the entire cup with tape. Um, I'm not going to bother. That's um, not really necessary with um, how tight that I got this on here. But you can do that if you want to. Um, but we're ready. So let's go ahead and go press this. We're going to press this around 360, 365 for um, about four and a half minutes. So let's go ahead. Let's go down to the oven and we'll get this cooking. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. You can see this is the PYD Life oven. Absolutely love it. I'm going to open this up. I have it set for about three minutes. Um, I'm putting this on a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to open this up, pull this out. Oops. Just like that. I'm going to make sure that I have my seam on top so that I know when I roll it, okay? And I'm gonna close it. And now I'm gonna let this go for about two minutes. So we'll come back in two minutes, um, we'll turn it, and then uh, we'll take it out of the oven, we'll let it cool down, and then once it cools down, <clears throat> excuse me, some people like to, um, some people like to take their wrap off while it's still hot, I like to let mine cool down. I feel that when I let it cool down, I um, I have less chance of it ghosting on me when I'm taking the wrap off. So um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let this go for two minutes and then at the end of the two minutes, I will turn it and then I'm gonna let it go for about two and a half more minutes after that. So, and then I have a silicone pad here for when it's done. I'll take it out and I'll put it on top of that. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to stop the video for now, and we will meet back at my craft desk after this is cooled down. So um, I went with 360, so 360 for two minutes, turn, and then another two and a half minutes. So we'll meet up at my craft desk and we'll get it unwrapped. Okay, so we are back at my craft table. Let's go ahead and get this unwrapped. This is nice and cool. So let's get this unwrapped and let's see what it looks like.
Gotta get this top part off and then I can just peel it. Um, actually, I'll take this off too. So it comes right off. Okey-dokey, let's see what we got. Ooh, ooh-wee, look at that. Oh, that is so pretty. Oh, look at that. So that's how you do a full wrap. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, I'm getting a cold. Um, that's how you do a full wrap. Super easy and super duper duper pretty. So that's it. That's all there is to it. I could have raised it up a little bit higher on the top. I did get some white on the very rim. Um, try to show you my seam. Seam is not too bad. It could have been a little bit better. I could have run my finger down it a little bit more. Um, and I could have, I could have raised the top part up just a little bit higher. But that is how you do a full wrap. Super duper pretty. And that's all there is to it. Okay, have a good day.